Recent scientific advancements, beginning with the work of Nasaru Emoto, have discovered some of the most amazing things about water. The most profound discovery, perhaps of all time, is that water has memory and is most highly influenced by human thought and emotion. The consciousness of water is kind of like um, um, Professor Rustam Roy at Penn State calls an alphabet. You can give it new words and new sentences and therefore it structures itself differently according to the information you give it. We have carried out many experiments on the effect that quite diverse factors have on samples of water. Magnetic fields, electrical fields, various objects, and also including a human presence and human emotions. And it became clear that positive and negative human emotions are the strongest element of influence. This example that Masaru Emoto really started, the idea of cryogenically flash freezing water after it's been exposed to emotion, music, thought, and different intentions. And we see, for all the people who, who know Masaru Emoto, he, he's pretty much a legend now, you see that this, this idea that cryogenically, instantaneously freezing water, we're freezing the structure of the information inside of water, and it gives us different architectures. So love increases water's energy levels and stabilizes the water, while aggressive emotions reduce the energy and make radical changes in the water. What we find is that when we look at ordinary tap water, which most of us are drinking in our cities, it just has horrible structure, horrible architecture, and it basically is robbing us of, of energetics. thoughts can do that to water, imagine what our thoughts can do to us. If we introduce this water into the human body, then that human body will assimilate this information, which may change the person's characteristics. Intellectually, at the level of thoughts, a person who sends negative thoughts is polluting his own water of which his body is 75 to 90 percent composed. Most studies done into the frequencies of cancer viruses and, and you know, other diseases in the body, there is a disharmonic, there is a disharmonic energetic. The positives on using restructured water on the human body are miraculous. For example, Perla Perla, um, an immunologist in Nevada, shows us an example on Water the Great Mystery where we take a person with heart disease and she shows all the, the blood cells are all stuck together and they don't, they, you know, they're, it's almost like they can't breathe, they're suffocating. And she gives the patient a small uh, glass of restructured water and then tests their blood only 10 minutes later. This, this shows you how fast this can happen. And 10 minutes later under the microscope, the same person's blood is now all buoyant. There's electrical static charge around every blood cell. None of them are stuck together. They're all floating around. 
and they can breathe again, which means the body can heal. Uh, other people say that they have uh, put an intent into the water to preserve the cut flowers, and they do not wilt. Others say they use them to make their growing flowers uh, bloom brighter. Uh, I have one report of a person giving it to their dog and the cataracts on the dog's eyes uh, disappearing. I've got one major report of a person who had suffered Crohn's disease, which supposedly is incurable. For 18 years, I have an email from him that he no longer has Crohn's disease after drinking the water for 10 days. Now it's like the research is exploding. I mean, people like Kurt Worthlich, who won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, Martin Chaplin, he's a professor at London South Bank University. Martin Chaplin is one of the pivotal um, scientists and professors at a major university who's in the middle of this argument over whether water has memory and consciousness or not. And when you read his paper, which I you know, have the pleasure to read, you see that the evidence in support of water having memory and consciousness is so overwhelming, and, and the arguments against it are because we don't know why and how it has memory and consciousness. And because we can't explain how it works, he says we can't even explain how gravity and why gravity works, yet we know gravity exists. The observations are consistent across the board over hundreds of researchers into this phenomenon. You can restructure water to reclaim polluted waterways. Whole lakes, uh, utterly devastated by environmental pollution, have been reclaimed in three years by introducing restructured water. Everything not only has structure, like water has structure and memory in a sense, but what if there are actual pictures and, and memories in the water, just like our heads, our brains, as Kurt Wuthrich says, the Nobel Prize winner, your head is full of water, which is that where the memories are. Human beings hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz, so we don't actually hear the sound of the sun. The sun does make a sound as it moves through the fabric of space, but it's so quiet that when NASA recorded it in deep space, they compressed or concentrated the waves into the audible spectrum. The researchers are astounded, David, they are telling me. They've never seen anything. They've never seen water restructured to this level of absolute perfection. It is so incredible when I got the photograph, and they just gave it to me recently, and the energetics data, which apparently was off the chart. There was no technology, there was no system known to, to humanity that could restructure water to the level that this sound could do.